sound of that steam engine was first heard around the Mon Valley in the summer of 1899. A new rolling mill, state-of-the-art technology at the turn of the century, was installed at the Homestead Works of the Carnegie Steel Corporation. It was called the 48-inch Universal Plate Mill. On December 29, 1979, after 80 years of operation, this mill shut down. Like much of our industrial past, it could have been scrapped, but it wasn't. In 1988, the Steel Industry Heritage Task Force was formed by an act of the United States Congress. The task force is a diverse group of people, citizens, public officials, industrial workers, historians, preservationists, and community and business leaders. Its congressional mandate is to develop a plan that will tell this region's story as the steel-making capital of the world. It was clear to the task force that the 48-inch mill and its great steam engine played an important role in shaping our nation's industrial history. America was growing rapidly, and the Homestead Works was ready to supply much of the steel needed for that expansion. The job at the 48-inch mill was to produce steel plate for a variety of heavy uses. It could roll steel plate up to 48 inches wide, up to 2 inches thick, and more than 100 feet long. Some of the last steel workers to operate the mill recall what it was like. When the salt hit the water, it would explode. It was loud. Sometimes it sounded like thunder. It would, dirt would come off the ceiling. It would blow up so hard, a lot of dirt would come off. All dirt would come off the ceiling. They used to roll the steel here. And with that engine going, I live about 10 miles away. And I was able to hear that engine at myself at, late at night when it's quiet. I'd be able to hear that engine. And uh, I don't know how these people could stand it here because the, the, steam, the steam stack was up that way going straight up and boy, it made a lot of noise. In early December 1990, more than a decade after the mill closed, the Steel Industry Heritage Task Force with its contractors and volunteers began the daunting task of cleaning, dismantling, cataloging, and moving more than 900 tons of machinery and equipment. Experts in the preservation of industrial machinery were brought in to oversee the dismantling and moving of this historic mill. A local community development group agreed to help raise funds and to be the interim owner of the machinery for the task force. Teams of historians, photographers, and architects from the historic American engineering record of the National Park Service documented the equipment before preservation work began. And many of the mill's last workers volunteered their time and advice to aid in both the documentation and preservation of the mill. Bill Rubensack and Walter Skronsky were two of those workers. And when that thing would uh, run away, everything used to vibrate. That's how much force there was in that runaway. There's people used to be in shanties over there, and they'd run out the shanties because of vibration of the building. They think the walls are coming in on them. We have a, a box up there. It's an indicator for what furnace is being rolled. We had eight furnaces in the mill here itself. And in order for the men down on the hotbed to know what furnace was being uh, uh, rolled next or coming out, they had a, uh, they'd put on a light and it would indicate through the holes in there what number would be one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to number eight furnace. So that's how they were able to tell what furnace was being rolled next, you know. Before even the first bolt was loosened, crews had to blast nearly a century's worth of dirt, grime, and rust from the machinery. Industrial riggers then worked for three months to disassemble and remove the massive equipment, which is now in temporary storage. With your help, the entire mill facility, the roll stand and rolling tables, the drive mechanism, the steam engine, spare parts and tools, all will be reassembled and become part of a steel heritage center in the Mon Valley.
Former workers and experts in industrial history agree this is a worthwhile goal. Yeah, I think that's a good idea to preserve it because a lot of people never see any of this again. You know, they'll never know what none of this is about. So that's a good idea. It's an old steam engine mill and it will be for the future generations to see. And I am for trying to preserve this mill. Not just because I worked here, but it's unique 